Okay, well now this brings up another interesting question. Who carried the cross? I mean, because according to John, Jesus carried the cross, John 19, 17. And he bearing his cross went out to the place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. However, Mark and Matthew and Luke all say that uh, they compelled a certain man, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. So which was it? Did Jesus carry it? Or did this guy Simon carry it? Both. Again, this is one of those things where it doesn't take a lot of effort to stop and think, no, wait a minute. Okay, Jesus left carrying his cross, was unable to bear it because he'd been up all night and beaten and scourged and mocked and I mean everything for several hours now. He's a little weak. And so they grab someone and say, here, help him carry it. I mean, that, that, that's a, that's a non-thing. And actually, okay, so, you know, so who carried it? Well, maybe they actually took it off Jesus and put it on this Simon guy. Or maybe if you've seen Passion of the Christ, I think the way they do it is that they both carry it because it's like tied to Jesus. And so Simon has to like get under him and, you know, they both walk and carry it. Either way. There's no reason to think this is a contradiction. It is no problem at all. But we get an added bonus because what's interesting is they mention that it was carried by Simon the uh, Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Who is Alexander and Rufus and why does Mark mention that? Hmm. Interesting. This is what is called an undesigned coincidence. We've talked about these before where there's just trivial little details that are dropped into the story that whenever you take this story over here and this story over here, they just interlock. Nice and neat and fill in details of the other. And this is a hallmark of writings by people who were actually there and actually knew some details. If you're making this up years later, these kind of things don't happen. This is not a fake, it's not a forgery. And so um, there's something we need to know. In the ancient world, um, names are given um, to kind of let you know, not, not just names, names of relatives, other people, relations are given to let you know who you're talking about. We're talking about Simon. Well, which Simon? There's at least three other Simons in the Bible I can think of off the top of my head. Right? There's Simon Peter. There's Simon the Magician. There, there's another Simon I can't think of right now, but I know I've run into some others. Which Simon are we talking about? Oh, this is the Simon who is the father of Alexander and Rufus. Okay, that lets us know which Simon it is. Okay, but why would that be important? Historians tend to think that Mark was writing in Rome. All the early um, records of you know, Christian church fathers who mention Mark say that he wrote in Rome. He was in Rome with Peter, where Peter, I think, ultimately met his demise, but he got his information from Peter, and he was in Rome. And so as he's writing, he's thinking of things that are going to make sense to his audience who are Roman Christians. So whoever this Alexander and Rufus people are, he expects that his audience in Rome is going to know who that is. That they're going to read that and go, oh, Simon the father, Alexander and Rufus, this was your dad. You know, they're going to know who he's talking about. Well, what's interesting is you jump over to Romans chapter 16, that long list at the end where Paul is just saying, say hello to this person, tell that person I said hi, uh, hey, help this person out. And it's kind of boring and you just like skip right past it. Don't skip past that stuff. That's where the fun stuff is located. He mentions um, Romans uh, 16, 13, he says, Greet Rufus, chosen of the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me, too. Well, now here's another Rufus. Possibly the same Rufus. It, he's writing to the Romans. He's writing to someone in Rome. And he's saying, hey, say hi to Rufus for me. Because, I mean, he, he, he's a great guy, and his mom was like a mother to me. While Mark is writing to the church in Rome and saying, hey, this guy Simon was Rufus's dad. Same Rufus? Hmm. 
kind of seems to line up. I would actually throw in another one. Uh, this is a maybe. I'm not going to get dogmatic. I'm not going to plant my flag and die on this hill. But what's interesting, Paul says that, um, you know, his mom was like a mom to me. Where has Paul been in one place for any amount of time for anyone's mother to really get close with him? Not very much, except in the book of Acts, we see that Paul and Barnabas spend a year in Antioch being ministered to and trained and taught and teaching and ministering themselves and listed among the people who are there are some men from Cyrene. Cyrene? Hey, that's where Simon's from, who carried the cross, you know, the father of Rufus. And the pieces just kind of seem to fit together. That here, while he was in Antioch, he got to know Rufus's family. And then later, Rufus had gone to Rome, and he's writing, saying, say hi to Rufus. And Mark is saying, hey, this guy Simon was Rufus's dad. I'm not about to get dogmatic and, you know, make a you know, new denomination built on that or anything, but seems to make sense to me.